Today's video, we're looking at some quick tips in Mastercam. So the last video I put out, we were talking about that shortcut for chaining. I figured a good video would be uh, just a video going through some quick tips in, in Mastercam usage. Uh, so we got seven tips today. I've uh, probably got about three or four more videos worth of stuff like this if you guys would like to see it. Uh, if you do, just let me know below. If you have extra tips uh, that you'd like to see covered, let me know again and I'll get those in the next couple of videos as well. When in a function requiring selection, you can end that selection by double clicking. You can look at this inside of a transform. So let's do a translate and we'll select this piece of geometry here. Now, typically you would go up and click on end selection. Alternatively, you can just simply double click your mouse. This also works inside of tool paths that need selection. Let's go into OptiRough and select some geometry. We'll select this face. And instead of clicking end selection, I'll just simply double click. Have you ever wondered how long you're going to be waiting for a tool path to regenerate if you make a change? In MashCam, you can do this. Right click on the tool paths manager under the display options, ensure that you've got toolpath generation time enabled. Once you do, when you expand out your operations, you'll see a timestamp representing the amount of time it takes to rebuild this operation. When in some functions in Mastercam, the on-screen prompt can be in the way of your work. You can change this by auto-hiding this prompt. For example, if we hop into push-pull, the on-screen prompt is quite big and it's hiding most of my graphics area. Yes, we can move this around, but there are alternatives. Right click on the prompt, select auto hide, and you'll get a minimum interface until you cursor over top of it, which you get the full interface after that. There's times when you just need a little bit more room in the graphics area in Mastercam. So especially when you need some more vertical room, you can minimize the ribbon bar. Up in the top right hand corner, clicking the up arrow will hide this ribbon bar. And to get it back, obviously we'll click that bar again. Conversely, you can use the keyboard shortcut Control and F1. And this leads us into another conversation about customizing the quick access toolbar at the top, which if you refer back to the videos I did with Ron, it looks like you've got a highly customized Matchcam interface that is closely related to the older X9 style of Matchcam. Well, actually I have a little more in here than I normally do. So let me uh, turn off <laughs> okay. everything because this is really the way I like to have my screen. So there you can see an extra use case of minimizing this ribbon bar into complete customization of your interface. When using the facing toolpath in Mastercam, if you don't select any geometry, it will face the stock setup. So in order for this to work, we need to define our stock first. So you can see I've got it set to a one inch cylinder that it's one inch high, and I'm going to put an extra 200 thou of stock on top of this part. Now, when we hop into our facing toolpath, no chaining will be done on the chaining manager. So not only will this toolpath see the boundary of our stock as its machining region, notice on the linking parameters page, it's also picked up the Z location of the start of stock. So I've got a top of stock of positive 0.2 above our part, and I can machine down to Z0 in a single click. When working within Mastercam, it's possible to pin files in your open menu. There's a couple different ways we can go about doing this. Firstly, we'll look at the file open menu. And here's the list of my 10 most recent files that I've worked with. And over on the right hand side, I can pin one or more of these files. If I decide I want to pin this one, two, three block, it will get separated and it's now pinned at the top. Alternatively, you can do it from your folder icon in the quick access toolbar. Click the down arrow and you can pin or unpin files from here. Now you may notice if you start pinning files in here, you're going to lose the number of other files that you can display in this menu. So right now we're limited to 10 and our pin file is included in that number. We can increase the number of files that we can see in our configuration on the files tab under the setting for number of files or folders. We can increase this up to 20. We'll click on the green check and save this to our configuration. And you'll now see the 20 most recent files, including your pin files. You can bulk edit common parameters in multiple operations at the same time. As an example, maybe you forgot to turn coolant on in all of your tool paths and opening each tool path one by one and turning the coolant on for each would be a little bit tedious. What you can do, select all the operations you want to control 
right click, edit selected operations, edit common parameters. And from here, you can make a change. So for the example, I'm going to say coolant and turn on. And now every toolpath that I've selected will have its coolant turned on. This is also a useful function if you decided to change clearance values. Perhaps you had something that was a little bit too high and you wanted to get something a little bit lower to save on cycle time. You could do that here as well. So that's a wrap on this first quick tip videos. Again, I've got a couple more of these en route, so stay tuned. For those that stuck around for this full video, thanks so much. Uh, and I've got one more favor to ask of you. Uh, and as a reward for uh, doing something for me, I'll give something back. And that is we're going to enter you into a draw for uh, some cam instructor swag. Uh, all you need to do is fill out this uh, questionnaire. So we're looking for some feedback on things you'd like to see covered in future videos. Uh, so I'll leave a link down in the description and you can just basically fill out this form. At the very bottom, we do need your name and email address. Uh, otherwise, we won't be able to mail you these cool t-shirts. So if you have the time, head on over to this survey, fill it out, let us know what you'd like to see done and we'll get those covered in future videos as well.